Today, the world is honoring the memory of Saudi King Abdullah, who died yesterday after a decade on the throne. His successor is his younger brother, 79-year-old Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. He has pledged to continue with the late king's policies. With us on the phone now from Riyadh, another member of the royal family, His Royal Highness Prince Alwaleed bin Talal Al Saud. P Prince Alwaleed, please allow me to begin our conversation by expressing my deepest condolences for your loss. I know how much you loved your late uncle, King Abdullah, and. Uh, and I, I can only say on behalf of, uh, of Bloomberg uh, that, that, that we send, uh, we, we are sorry for your loss. We send our deepest condolences. I appreciate this. Thanks, thanks a lot, Eric. Thank you. Uh, thanks from Bloomberg. Of course, of course. Uh, Your Royal Highness, your late uncle, King Abdullah, was a reformer determined to modernize Saudi Arabia. Tell us, please, what we can expect from King Salman. Yeah, Bismillah ar rahim Yeah, I know that, as you said, the King Abdullah was a real reformer who have introduced a lot of economical, uh, political, and social changes to Saudi Arabia. Clearly, the, the, his, his mission is still not uh, accomplished yet. So Prince Salman and Prince Migran will assure you that they will continue his path because they have been with him in the past two, three years. So all what he was doing, they were on board with him completely, and uh, uh, King Salman and uh, Crown Prince uh, Migran will continue on that path uh, uh, without any doubt. And what does that mean practically, Your Royal Highness? If they will continue on the path, what can we expect to see? Well, Saudi Arabia faces a lot of challenges uh, on the political front, economical front, financial front, and social front. And all these matters have to be faced on head on. Uh, and all these challenges, uh, I believe that uh, King uh, Salman and uh, Prince Megan are up to it. Uh, uh, so uh, don't get me wrong, we're not saying that the mission is easy. Uh, there's a lot of, especially with the pressure right now we have in the reduction price of oil, which is going to put a lot of pressure on the, our Saudi budget, and which also will impact our GDP and GDP growth. So uh, 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 there's no doubt that the, uh, the duties and responsibilities that King Abdullah and, and, uh, and his deputy, uh, Prince uh, Migran, will be facing are tremendous, but I think they are up to it. And what do you think they will do about oil prices? Uh, well, uh, uh, clearly the price of oil, having it uh, reduced by 50 percent, without any doubt, it will affect Saudi Arabia by, because our budget depends 90 percent on, on oil. But clearly, Saudi Arabia has a lot of uh, uh, areas uh, to diversify into, and I, I've been pushing the government for the last uh, uh, one year to really do diversify and establish a sovereign wealth fund and have an activated sovereign wealth fund. And I think that we are beginning to, to hear some uh, voices of approval uh, uh, to activate that, uh, that project. That's only one, one path that Saudi Arabia could take to diversify its economy. There are a lot of other paths that they could take, such as uh, encouraging tourism and uh, 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 encouraging the exploration of other minerals from, from, Saudi, uh, from the uh, from underground in Saudi Arabia. There are many other potentials uh, uh, that could Saudi Arabia uh, fill, up the, fill up the gap of the reduction in the price of oil. Your Royal Highness, do you believe that uh, King Salman supports the decision not to cut production and to allow oil, the oil price to be set as freely as it has by the market? Oh, no doubt about that, because uh, uh, King, uh, Prince Salman, when he was prince at that time, he was sharing the council ministers uh, meeting that approved that particular decision. You remember, King Abdullah was not, has not been sharing the council ministers for the past, uh, 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 you know, almost a year. So Prince Salman was sharing, uh, when he was a prince at that time, he was sharing the council ministers who approved that particular decision. So yes, I assure you, this, this is uh, a decision that King, uh, King Salman and his deputy Prince Megan are, are on board with. Is, is Saudi Arabia happy that oil is trading at $45 a barrel? <laughs> there is no way any country uh, that depends on on, on, on a commodity, 90% uh, its budget depends on it, can be happy. But clearly, uh, since uh, the oil price has crashed so rapidly, it's something that we have to face. It's inevitable. So uh, no, the answer is no. We are not happy with that. But it's something that you have to face head on without uh, without any uh, hesitation. But if you're not happy, why leave it this way? Saudi Arabia on its own taking a decision or influencing a decision by OPEC to cut production at any moment could change the dynamics for oil instantly. If Saudi Arabia isn't happy, why leave it at $45? 
uh, first, uh, this is, you know, uh, what you said is, is, is not very correct because let's say Saudi Arabia tomorrow uh, reduces the production by a million or two million barrels. Yeah, there's no doubt that uh, there could be a small spike in, in the price of oil. But the problem here is that some other countries who are very desperate also, they will, they will, they will fill up that gap in no time. So I think that on the medium to long term, the fact that price of oil is 45, this, this will, will inevitably cause some, uh, some oil rigs and will, will cause some oil exp new uh, oil exploration in the United States and other places in the world to be rendered ineffective and rendered uneconomical. So no doubt that the supply of oil at $45 will definitely be impacted somehow. And add to that the fact that eventually China, India, uh, uh, Germany, uh, and some other countries uh, will, will have their economic growth come back uh, uh, and be, uh, uh, be a bit higher than what it is right now. So the confluence of these two events, lesser supply and more demand, will cause the price of oil to go up a bit more. Uh, I, I don't say necessarily to go up to 100 or above, because I, I went public by saying I think we'll never see the price of $100 again. But I think it will stabilize somehow above the 50 price range. Why do you say it will not exceed $100? There are so many countries, including Iran, for example, and Russia, that depend on a price of oil higher than or close to $100 a barrel. Well, just because they depend on it doesn't mean it's going to go up there. Because remember also that Iran right now is not producing full capacity. And if they reach an agreement to the United States and the, the five countries plus one, Iran could, could pump another 3 million barrels into, into, into in this whole equation. So there's another pressure on the supply here. Uh, so the supply could increase by 3 million barrels. I think the era of $100 plus is really is, it was an aberration. I think we'll never see it again. But maybe also the price of 45 50 is also is an aberration at the downward trend. But uh, I think that the price uh, it will stabilize somewhere between these two ranges. So is the decision to maintain OPEC production where it is now a deliberate effort to drive marginal production in the United States out of business? I, I don't think it's that explicit. I think it is uh, the fact that we kept our production where it is right now, because if we reduced our production in Saudi Arabia and other OPEC countries, and some other countries will come and fill up that gap. Number one, and, uh, but an implicit uh, rationale logic behind that also is that some, yes, that some um, oil rigs and some new explorations that are, uh, that are below the 45 to 50 dollar range will have to be stopped eventually because everything is here has to be based on economical grounds. Your Royal Highness, um, Prince Mohammed bin Nayef is now in line eventually to become king of your country. What does that say about Saudi Arabia's direction in the years to come? Well, uh, uh, King Salman ha has appointed today uh, Prince Mohammed bin Naif, who is a very close friend and, and a cousin of mine, uh, to be the, the third in, uh, in command in Saudi Arabia. I think this shows that uh, Saudi Arabia uh, is, is in, 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 in full force in, um, in transferring the power from the old generation, which are the, the sons of King Abdul Aziz, to the, uh, to the third generation, who are the, 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 the now the, 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 the grandsons of King Abdulaziz. And I think uh, that uh, this proves that Saudi Arabia is on, on track to have a, a, a tranquility, stability, and a very peaceful tra tra transition of power from the uh, uh, second generation who are the, king, the sons of King Abdulaziz to the third generation who are the grandsons of King Abdulaziz. Your Royal Highness, King Salman, does he have the same kind of passion and commitment towards helping the advancement of women and the treatment of women in Saudi Arabia? Oh, no doubt about that. Uh, King Abdullah, uh, King Salman, and the Crown Prince, uh, Prince Migran are my uncles, and I know them very well. And they are not only passionate, they are extremely passionate about that. And I can assure you that they will continue of the path of King Abdullah, and they will accelerate the process of, uh, of what King Abdullah has begun with. Then with the exception of, obviously, an emotional distress right now, are there going to be any other impacts on the country? Sorry, repeat the question, please. What's that? Then with the exception of this personal loss you and the country is going through because of the death of the king, are there going to be any other impacts that we should be aware of? Well, I think the transition today was very smooth. Today we have just prayed and we have just buried King Abdullah. And, and I think within uh, one hour from now, we are all going to, uh, to the uh, royal court 
to pay our allegiance now for, formally and officially to King Salman, to Prince uh, Migran. Uh, and, uh, you know, as you say in United States, you know, um, you know uh, the, the king dies and then uh, long live the king. So really, uh, the transition was very smooth. And I think this really uh, is, is, uh, is a plus for Saudi Arabia. Your, Your Royal Highness, once, once the succession moves to the next generation that you described, uh, uh, Prince bin Nayef, what will happen to Saudi Arabia's ambitions? What will Saudi Arabia want to be? Well, uh, you know, uh, at least my generation, who is also the generation of Prince Mohammed bin Naif also, and my other cousins who are the grand other, other grandsons of King Abdulaziz, we would like Saudi Arabia to be fully incorporated in the 21st century. I think we want Saudi Arabia to be very much assimilated uh, in the new uh, world order. And I think we still have some weaknesses that we have to work on. You know, I'm a man who says the truth and say bluntly, you know, we're going to have to face some political questions, some uh, economical questions, some financial issues, and some social matters that have to be addressed head on. Uh, and I think that Saudi Arabia is on track uh, to really work on all these fronts. But I believe that this matter has to be accelerated. And maybe with the new generation right now, and with the younger generation, who really Prince Mikran represent, and uh, somehow Prince Salman also, and a bigger extent Prince Mohammed bin Naif represent also, I think the process can be, can be accelerated to really reach uh, our, our, our uh, ideal situation. Prince Al-Walid, I want to thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of Bloomberg, we extend our condolences once again. That is Prince Al-Walid bin Talal with us live from Riyadh talking about the implications of the death of his uncle, King Abdullah, and the prospects under the new king, Salman. More to cover here on Market Makers when we return. Liberty Global CEO, Mike Fries. Stay with us.